So everyone, today is Thursday, August 19th. How'd that happen? <laughs> 2021. Always seem impressed at how much time is flying. And this is a week in charts, by the way. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight. I appreciate your taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. I've done a real poor job as of late getting the word out, and that's my fault. And one day I'll get better. Probably won't. <laughs> But you can always go to daylearner.com slash webinar if you want to attend live. And I'd love to have you here live. And as you veterans here know, I will answer your questions and interact with you. Agree to disagree or agree on some issues. So what are we talk about? Well, obviously current market conditions, and I'm gonna have a lot to say about that. I think things are a little uglier than they appear on the surface. And I'll flesh all that out. When we get to the live charts, your questions on trading, your favorite stock picks, you can uh, ask about as many stocks as you want. Just ask about one at a time. And in general, keep your questions relative to what's on the slides or what we're talking about, just so my ADD doesn't kick in and I don't get too far sidetracked. But you can ask about whatever you want, especially once we get to the live charts. So I want to continue to talk about the trading stuff. And I want to talk this week about trading crypto. And I got thinking today, I was work, as I was working on this presentation, it's like crypto, crypto, crypto this week. And it was a lot of crypto last week. And some of you guys are like, well, I don't trade crypto. I think it's stupid. And it's like, well, I think it's stupid too. And I'll get into that in just one second. However, markets are markets. And IPOs can often be traded in a very similar way. And momentum stocks, when things are really, really cranking, can also be traded in the same way. And I'll show you all that. And show you exactly how I do it. It's not rocket science at all. There's a screen screen. As you know, you can lose money trading, or as often sum it up, all predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. I borrowed that from Greg Morris, my good buddy. So I've been talking about this trading stuff all day for for a few weeks. And it seems like lately I've been a little extra cognizant of what's going on and some of the things I'm doing, both the, the trials and tribulations and mistakes and Good stuff and bad stuff and i've been more and more cognizant cognizant of that in the last couple of weeks it's been a lot of ipo stuff um the intraday stuff except for the last couple of days hasn't been that great and that's because the markets have been choppy and all over the place it's hard to capture an intraday trend somebody was asking in the group what's intraday trading well day trading has a bit of a negative connotation to it and i preach against day trading forever but intraday trading is when you get in as early as possible and you hold on as long as possible hopefully getting in somewhere near the open and exiting near the close and sometimes with an opening gap reversal you can do that and i did have one today in victoria's secret and we'll take a look at that one when we get to the live charts but anyway i've been cognizant of what i'm doing and as I often say, one thing that I tell people is to trade like someone is watching. And I thought I'd go a presentation without saying it, but a few years back, Charlie Kirk was nice enough to invite me to St. Lucia for his traders retreat. And in the breakout sessions, we have breakout sessions with individuals, both Charlie had Charlie and I had separate sessions with people who want to talk about trading and such. And with one guy in particular, because it is a lonely sport and you are by yourself, I explained to him, it's like trade like someone is watching. Announce your trades out loud. A lot of times when, and, and I don't do this every day, but most days I do and I try to remember to do it, is when I go to get in a trade, I talk through the trade, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and, and it helps. And as you guys may have noticed over the past several years, I become more and more transparent in a lot of what I do, both good and bad. And I think that's made me a better trader because I don't want to show you some screw ups that I made. I'd rather just not make the screw up. <laughs> but anyway, trade like somebody's watching. I think that's important. That's kind of the whole uh, genesis or the whole thinking, I should say, behind this series I've been doing on the trading stuff. Now, before we get into crypto, I want to talk about a few caveats. The bottom line is trading is trading. 
what you learn in crypto will carry forward to to other markets. And, and the great thing about crypto, it kind of reminds me of years ago when people were doing like little micro forex trading and stuff. Not that I would recommend you rush out and trade forex because it's a very tough market. In fact, I woke up this morning thinking, is my account frozen because I haven't made a trade in so long? I need to check into that, note this out. But not that you want to rush out and trade Forex, but to somebody learning how to trade, maybe a market like Forex would kind of help you to get a feel for the trading in a very, 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 very small way. And as I've said a thousand times, one of my many stories that I repeat, there was an individual that I know, and he was around a bunch of traders, but he was more like behind the scenes kind of guy, and he didn't actually trade. And then few years later he began trading now he did pick up a little bit through osmosis but he was basically kind of starting from scratch and he had he had me as a bit of a resource and he picked my brain a little bit and i'm sure the other guys allowed him to pick, pick their brain too but long story endless he did okay kind of right out the box and and i'm like you know i know you've had a lot of exposure but how did you do so well so fast and he goes, well, Dave, I'm, I'm just making really, really, really small bets. So I'm just kind of thinking about this as we're going live. You could you could trade crypto with little, little, little tiny, tiny, tiny bets. And I mean, you could fund an account with $1,000 if you want to learn how to trade, you want to learn how to trade crypto, and just make some little bitty, 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 bitty bets to where maybe you're risking $10 or $20 a trade. The bottom line is trading is trading. What you learn in crypto will carry forward to uh, the markets. In fact, I didn't go in and learn how to trade crypto. I took what I knew from other markets and brought to crypto. And the reason I'm excited about crypto is crypto is hot again. The reason I haven't mentioned crypto in six months was because crypto died out for a long time. And then you just move on to somewhere else. Now, I always have my core methodology, which is stocks and trading pullbacks and uh, swing to intermediate term and hopefully much, much, much longer trend following. Go in and look at the archives, davelander.com slash archives to see all the service archives to get a feel for what we're doing there. But I will trade other markets when they heat up. As I said before, a friend of mine, he's, he's Indian. From India, and <laughs> he's like, Dave, if they found out that intermediate drug use was on the rise, he would be out buying needles. It's like, well, I don't know if I'm that bad. And is intermediate drug use on the rise? I don't know. He actually talked like that. He didn't talk, he didn't have an Indian accent. He had that. It's funny when I imitate people, I use, I always use his voice. Anyway, now here's the thing. If you want to be really successful, learn how to trade in efficient markets, okay? So let's say you're getting a little IPO and it doubles or triples over a short period of time, okay? Or trade efficient markets where they can there can be an inefficiency, okay? So you might have a big cap stock does an opening gap reversal or a big cap stock begins to roll over and the whole market's rolling over. It's kind of just the opposite we do on the long side. We'll go in and short some of these more efficient markets because they're poised to make an inefficient move. But if you want to make a lot of money trading, seek out inefficient markets. And sometimes you play the hand that's dealt. Every now and then you'll see me play a bank or something. But usually it's set up to where I think it can make an, an inefficient type of move. An efficient market is everything sort of priced in, okay? So if you look at, I was looking at a, a, a buddy of mine works for a drug company. I was trying to figure out which one it was. I know it's Japanese, so I was looking up Japanese drug companies. Anyway, I was looking at one of them and it just kind of chopped sideways forever. What's well, a huge, huge, thick, 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 thick stock. And I don't think one of their drugs is gonna be that exciting or exciting enough for it to take off. And he was asking me a couple of days ago, he says, well, I don't understand, like, you got these companies with all these earnings and stuff and such, and they're doing great in, as a company, but the stock isn't doing anything. But you got this company that has no earnings, some little biotech or something that's going straight up. And I, I explained to him 
it's the promise of the future. In fact, that's what I named my IPO course. I didn't want his eyes to glaze over <laughs> by getting into all those details. But it's the promise of the future that makes that market very inefficient, okay? It, it is able to double or triple over a short period of time, or at the least, it can move overnight to where you can make enough money to get your initial profit target out, get that swing trade out. So that's what an inefficient market is. Everything isn't priced in. All the players haven't jumped in. And it's not a crowded playing field, so to speak. Have you ever traded E-minis? Raise your hand. Yeah, it's an efficient market, okay? I have a love-hate relationship with E-minis. I love them and they hate my account, you know? It's a tough, 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 tough market to trade. A lot of times when I'm trading E-minis, it's kind of like beating your head against the wall. It feels so good when you quit. But every now and then they can make an inefficient move. But the bottom line is, again, if you really want to really make a lot of money and a lot of money quickly, seek out inefficient markets and seek to capitalize on that inefficiency. And sometimes it can be as simple as buying them when they're going up and selling them when they are going down. This same guy was one of his friends was asking me, what exactly do you do? I said, well, kind of in a nutshell, I buy things that go up and I sell things that go down. And I think if we all just don't lose sight of that as traders, I think we'll do okay and not try to outsmart the market. And we'll get into that a little bit in a few minutes. So there are times when inefficient markets, when there are times with inefficient markets, when you could simply buy them when they are going up and sell them when they, go, when they are going down. And as I just said, that should always be in the back of your mind. Now, we don't just blindly buy individual stocks because they're going up, although sometimes you can, okay? But in general, what we do is we're looking for some sort of setup that kind of kind of loads it to where it looks like it's ready to pop back in the direction of the trend. In other words, usually something like a pullback or a trend knockout, that type of thing. With something inefficient like IPOs, you could just simply buy them when they're breaking out. And I have several patterns that do just that. And I don't want to say it without, it's like, I need to get out and get some new stories. But as I said before, one of my clients years ago, he did this twice. And I, I need to ask him which years he did it. But I know that the momentum was just blowing and going and going kind of crazy. And he would just, he had a little app. And he, I think he got it from like CNBC. And he would just stay in the top three or four or five stocks in my Landry list all day long, or, or at least that was his goal. And he would flip them out by the end of the day. It's kind of like an intraday relative strength type of, of, of thing. And it worked really well. And he told me that he paid for down payments on, on two of his investment properties just by doing that. Well, you can't do that every day. You can't do that right now, okay? For sure, you cannot do that right now. And then, as I've been saying quite a bit lately, I went a whole month or darn near a month without recommending anything. And it's been probably five weeks because I, about a week ago, I started recommending stocks again and nothing has triggered yet. So this is not a great momentum market. I'm going to flesh that out when we get to the actual charts. But there are times when you can pretty much just buy anything on the Landry list, which is my call list, that is strong. Stay in the strongest ones all day or create your own little momentum list and, and just follow along like that. Right now is not that time. Right now is that time in crypto, though. Knock on wood. Now, keep in mind, it changes quickly. Last week, I went to do the presentation. Everything was blowing and going, and then everything kind of cooled off by the time I got around to doing the presentation. So seek out inefficient markets, and right now, crypto is inefficient. But we could be talking about any market here, okay? So I don't want you to get too hung up in the fact that we're talking about crypto, okay? So you want to trade it like any other market, and occasionally like you would trade an inefficient market. So what am I trying to say there? What I'm trying to say there is when we go through my portfolio and some setups here in crypto, you're gonna recognize some things like pullbacks. And I don't think I have any TKOs, but I have some pullbacks in there, which is the crux of the, crux of the core methodology. But I'm also trading it like a momentum market and I'm just using RS. 
And by RS, I am not talking about some sort of indicator. I'm just looking at the strongest currency. I use that term loosely, pairs. And, you know, I don't care what it is as long as it's going up, like the aforementioned friend of mine used to say, you know? And I, I don't know if I'm as bad as, as he says, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with buying stuff, stuff that goes up. I'm in some stocks now. Some of them are going up, thank God. And I have no idea what the company does. I might know if they're a biotech or whatever, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm not gonna get into a whole lot of research into the company because I might not even be in the company tomorrow. But Dave, how could you how could you get into stock and not know anything? It's like, well, all you need to know is is it going up, is it going down, or is it going sideways? And if you ever get confused with that, oh, can't pull my jacket off. I'll show you later. <laughs> but it doesn't matter as long as it goes up. And here's the thing, and I know one of you guys just won't touch these things with a 10-foot pole, and I don't blame you, okay? And I think they're bullshit too, okay? Uh, they're probably, but I could give a crap as long as they're going up. I mean, it's kind of stupid. Like, well, the little zeros and ones, and then, you know, everybody, they got these people, and then and they stop each other from cheating, and and then they just create new ones all the time, you know? It's just, it's BS. But, like, I, without throwing someone under the bus specifically, as I've said many a times, there was a person at, at you know, 4,000, at 5,000, at 10,000, at 20,000, at 30,000, at 40,000, at 50,000, at 60,000, kept telling us how much crap these things are and how bogus they are. Well, you could have written that from, let's say you got in late at 4,000 to 60,000 and had a pretty good run. Now, easier said than done. But you get the point, okay? It, it did go from 4,000 to 60,000 before it had a really, really big correction. I guess it had a few corrections along the way, but anyway. And as I often say, you can pontificate your brilliance to be right someday, okay? But who cares? I'd rather make money. And who cares they call me a trend following more? I don't care. Now, you do have to avoid getting attached. I was talking privately with someone and they keep going after this one crypto. I'm not sure why. And I, I just I just don't like it. it. To me, it looks like it's all over the place. So I just leave it alone. So don't get attached to any particular one and don't let the endowment effect take effect. Endowment effect means once you own something, it becomes more valuable to you than if you don't own it. And there, there's been thousands of behavioral finance and behavioral science experiments done with that. You know, they, you, they, they give you a mug or something and you write your name on it or you just hold the mug, right? And it's your mug and all of a sudden you want to sell the mug and they, you want more of that mug all of a sudden. Whereas if you were to price the mugs and you didn't own them, you would price them much lower. You have to, as I've said before, you gotta be a tyrant when it comes to trading. And I was trying to explain trading and how I trade to these gentlemen that I was talking about and I've been working out with them. And uh, I explained that it's, it's like being a boss and I've done complete presentations and webinars and all kinds of stuff just on this. But if you got three employees and two of them or a bust in their butt and one of them is sitting on his butt, what are you going to do? It's like, well, you're not going to sit around and wait for Joe who's sitting on his butt to start working because he hadn't been working for three weeks. He's bound to start working any day now. You're going to fire his ass. And, and usually when I explain that to people, they, as I said a while back, one guy interrupted and said, I'd fire his ass. I'm like, all right, well, then why are you holding on to these Weed stocks that are down 50%. Anyway, so you have to be a, ty a tyrant and you have to not get attached. And it was interesting. I was looking at the two portfolios from last week to this week. 
and I'll show you both of those in a few minutes. And I was like, I was long that? I was long that? What's that? What's that? It's like, I don't care. And you really have to, I often talk about being flippant, and I never really can fully flesh it out. But I mean, that's a great example of being flippant, just buying stuff that goes up and getting rid of it, selling it when it goes down. I have to say, RS trading is an absolute blast. It's the funnest thing to do. And I think I think there's like a deep psychological thing when it comes to trading. And you're you're trying to figure out this puzzle and you're looking at the pullback. Is the pullback deep enough? Is the TKO deep enough? And and what sector is it in? And it, it there's a lot of variables. And you could be you could be wrong on a few of those variables. And it doesn't mean that the trade was wrong, but you kind of set the stage for disappointment. And a lot of your trades, in fact, sometimes most of your trades won't work out, but with proper money management and catching a few winners here and there, you can do incredibly well, at least over time. Not all the time, but over time. And it does take, as I preach, six to eight months to capture a good momentum cycle. I get people coming to service for a week and leave. It's like, you have no idea how long it takes. And then I have other people come in when I'm printing money and then they, they tell the boss to F off. I'm like, oh geez, no, it takes time. With the RS trading, it doesn't require a whole lot of thought. And it's and it's almost like a game. And, and years ago, my broker, my futures broker told me to treat trading like a game and i never really forgotten that i never forgot that and i've seen it in several books since so it's kind of common common knowledge at least with some of these trader guys and with the rs game it's it's pretty easy to do okay you know i'm going to flesh all that out in just one second and one thing i want to caution you on it's kind of like the friend slash client that paid for two down payments. He's not trying to pay for a down payment right now on his investment property that, he, that he, he's always doing something. And he's not doing that right now because we're not in an RS market. And remember that these crazy momentum markets don't last for very long. And that's why I'm sort of beating a dead horse right now on taking a look at at crypto if you've never done so and i really have nothing to gain from this other than if you're successful in crypto because i helped you be successful then maybe you might look into some of the things i do with the money management not actual management of money i'm i don't get into that business anymore but the money management position money and position management of your own positions the setups, the core methodology, and all these other things. But the bottom line is trading is trading. If I can teach you how to trade one market, you could trade others as long as you know the nature of the beast that you're dealing with, okay? You're not gonna go in and trade a super, super fat, efficient stock and trade it like every day. You're gonna have to wait for it to set up for an inefficient move. You'd be much better off seeking out an inefficiency. And, and by the way, sometimes people get caught up with, I just wanna trade this little area here and these little things or whatever. When there's this whole universe out there, you can go out and find that inefficiency. But it's a blast trading the RS. Just don't let it go to your head because it never lasts. And and like one of you guys, John Z in the group, is like, you know, whenever he feels like going about and buy a car because he made all his money in crypto, usually it's when the it all comes tumbling down. So go out and buy that car. Don't middle, I always say don't mentally monetize, but if you do find yourself mentally monetizing, actual monetize. And I'm gonna have a lot to say about that in upcoming, um, presentations. I think I mentioned that last week, this this book here, Why You Win or Lose, A Psychology of Speculation, written probably 60 years ago. And I wasn't blown away by it, so don't you don't have to rush out and get it, but there are a few things in here. And he does talk about, you know, you might um, 
take take some money and go buy a boat and how nice it is to sit on your boat. So and the point I think he was trying to make, and I think others have made in the past is, especially like in the dot-com era for, era for like uh, people like, let's say worked at Cisco or whatever, and they had options worth $10 million and then they let them all erode back down to whatever, <laughs> next to nothing. So it's it's okay to monetize that, but actually monetize that. And I'll talk about that in upcoming shows. So don't let it go to your head when, and you know, we're all guilty. You, you, you feel like God, I've never seen a business where one day you, you know, you feel like God and then you feel like you're not even, able to flip burgers or not even qualified to flip burgers that might that's beyond your pay grade and sometimes that all happens within like you know between breakfast and lunch it happened to me yesterday between breakfast and lunch anyway uh cash is not trash you know um i don't know why i sound like <laughs> she's a work with a guy from alabama hell he's from alabama <laughs> cash is not trash I sound like uh ross Peru. anyway it's okay to to cash out of these things, cash out of any market and sit on some cash. I'm I'm not happy that I got stopped out recently on some of these stocks that I am that I'm in, some of these go-go stocks, some of these inefficient stocks. But it sure was nice this morning when I was looking at my settled funds to see, and, and they counted it on the margin, that I had a lot of cash and I still had a lot of stocks on too, but I had a, a pile of cash and it's like, you know what? I'm, I might sit on that for a little while until the next opportunity comes along. In fact, I will. Um, with anything, you need to know your risk and yes, these markets could be total BS, but who cares? But don't, don't bet the farm, okay? My if my crypto accounts blew up tonight, I would drop some f bombs, but I would still be here tomorrow and I'd still be doing okay. All right. So don't bet the farm in any market. Make sure you understand proper money management. Make sure you're taking profits along the way. And above all, learn how to sit on your hands. And again, cash is not trash. Now, before we talk about relative strength and jump into the live charts on the crypto, and then we'll go to the live charts on stocks and take a look at the market. What I would encourage you to do is, is don't bottom fish and or buy something because it is cheap. And it seems like lately, I know a guy who knows a guy who just bought whatever. Um, 200,000 uh, little these little coins that are that are just minuscule like a like a fraction of a fraction of a penny you know so if it just goes to $5 I'll be worth 5 billion dollars like okay <laughs> or your $500 investment is going to be worth zero which is more than likely uh, I think I talked about Donnie and uh, slow Donnie in last week's uh, Trading Simplified show. I'm not a big fan of sitcoms. That the canned laughter just makes me nuts. I think, as I said in yesterday's show or day before, whatever. But I did by accident see a, a just shoot me with Slow Donnie, and I forget the guy's name, but he's hilarious. This guy here, Slow Donnie, and Slow Donnie fell out of a tree and hit his head, and his brother had pushed him or something. And he became Slow Donnie. Well, Slow Donnie was really more like Lazy Donnie. There was nothing wrong with Donnie, but he carried on this fake injury, this head injury, for a long, long time to get out of work. For instance, they'd say like, uh, "Donnie, come help with the dishes." Donnie, break dishes. You know, he'd say things like that. But Donnie wasn't stupid, and it finally got, that was his downfall. Is that uh, when he had to break character? He kept, there were these pneumatic tubes and, and the, the boss who they opened up this wall and they were like a, like the bank tubes that, you know, send things pneumatically. And Donnie, Donnie kept saying, Donnie, think vacuum. And the guy was like, oh, I think it's some sort of hot air or whatever. And Don, Donnie, think vacuum. So 
my wife and I, and I know I just told the story yesterday, but my wife and I, it's like, we'll let Donnie think. And for instance, I'll, I can't see a screw of something I'm looking at. And I'm like, give me a flat blade. And my wife's like, no, you need a Phillips. I'm like, I need a flat blade. We'll go back once or twice. And then she'll go, Donnie think flat blade. <laughs> so it's like, okay, we're dealing with an issue with our house. And it's like, I keep telling the contractor, Donnie think soffit vents. Donnie think soffits. But anyway, Donnie thinks. So what would Donnie think? So if Donnie were looking at this market, and this is a market that someone bought and they they were asking my wife to ask me what my opinion was. <laughs> so I created this slide and I took a screenshot of it and I said, Donnie think downtrend, okay? So just because this thing is a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a cent, I mean, this is, where would one cent be? I mean, there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of zeros in there, right? So yeah, you could you could spend $500 and buy a million of these things, right? Well, that $500, you know, if it goes to a dollar, you'll have what? A million, no, oh, you'll have a million bazillion dollars, right? But it won't, okay? Now, does it mean you can't buy a cheap one when they start going up? And I'm going to show you some cheap ones that I bought. One way to think about the RS trading is think about it as window dressing, okay? So window dressing is the act or art or technique of timing or trimming the display windows in a store. Well, the uh, the goal of the window display is to is to show you like the nice stuff or whatever and get you excited and want you to try to draw you into the store, right? Well, in the business world, it's the misrepresentation of something so as to give it a favorable impression. The company's list of assets included a great deal of window dressing, okay? So if you're a portfolio manager and Tesla is the hottest stock in hot town and you're getting ready to show your portfolio, well, you better make darn sure you got some Tesla in that. So when, when the clients look at it, it's like, oh, well, look, he's got some Tesla. That's where he's got some Tesla, okay? And it seems like it's kind of a disingenuous thing, and I guess their motives are a little disingenuous, but there's nothing wrong with wanting to, to be with the pretty girls, okay? And be seen with the pretty girls and or be seen with the pretty guys. And I guess if you're into both, as what's his name? <laughs> uh I can't think of his name on the top of my head, but he's like, if you're if you're in the both, you're a greedy bastard. But anyway, so I have a my clip art program is uh, not very expensive, so this didn't didn't turn out to be um, exactly what I was looking for. But you wanna you wanna have that pretty girl to show off, right? And so I thought about that window dressing and, and pretty girl theme kind of all day today in looking at these shit coins and with these. These shit coins, when you're playing the relative strength game, you could just simply buy the ones that look really good or just going straight up, believe it or not. And I'll show you a few of those in just one second. So buy them when they go up, and if they don't go up, don't buy them. And just think of that as kind of like a almost constant window dressing. Now, that's the next question is, how often do you rebalance? Well, what I'm doing is once I get my initial profit target out, I'm just putting a stop in and I'm not so worried about the rebalancing, okay, to 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 be with the next pretty girl, so to speak, the next hot crypto, whatever. But rather, if I get stopped out, then that creates a slot to go after that one. And also, if something is underperforming and it hasn't hit the initial profit target just yet, and this is gonna make a lot of sense in the chart. So don't don't worry if you're not if I'm not making sense but if it hasn't hit the initial profit target yet and there's there's much prettier girls to be with then by all means move away and then move to the next one and i'll show you that in just one second so i thought it'd be fun i know you want to party with me to take this is a snapshot straight from and i blew it up a little bit so you can see it this was straight from last week's screen and I've changed my color coding up a little bit, but green means that I am long and I've hit the initial profit target. Orange means I need to take some action on a position. 
and cyan means it's in a different account but forget about cyan for now and i'll show you the new color schemes here when we get to the live charts but just going back to last week let's see what made it matic did not make it quantum you can see is right here sc made it ada made it uni did not make it okay got flipped out for something else ocean we on ocean yet yeah ocean made it trx made it grt got knocked out now on some of these they got knocked out not because they were performing poorly but other crypto was performing much 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 better and i'm going to walk you through this trust me in just a second ogn take it out algo take it out rlc take it out xlm take it out lrc so we're not getting attached to these things right but but as you could see quite a few right have made it one week so i've held let's see one two three four five six seven about seven or so seven or eight of those i've held for a whole week and we'll take a look at this next week and see where we are now just real quick ipos not dead yet okay i know one of you guys was talking about you backed off an ipo trading you're probably sorry you ever told me that <laughs> at least with one specific pattern but i'm still seeing ipos make some really big moves now it can be frustrating like one of them i mean believe me, it was hard to do but one of them i got knocked out of and today i saw it was up about three points intraday and i said you know what i'm just going to jump right back in and i might be angry if i lose by jumping back in but knowing myself I'm going to be a lot more angry if I miss the mother of all moves. If I lose, that's fine. I can deal with that. Now, you might feel differently. And sometimes, sometimes, as I said earlier, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but I think it did. The best markets to, to buy are the ones that are going straight up. And IPOs are, are still doing pretty good. They're not, they're not amazing at this juncture but they're still doing pretty good. All right, let's shift gears. Let me just change my screen over. And I want to I want to walk you through everything I was talking about with the crypto. So, let me get this changed over. And if you guys want to start asking, if you have any questions you want to ask about crypto or just, you know, any comments cuz I learn a lot. I believe me, I learn a lot from you guys. So, here's my new color scheme. I've already forgotten what cyan is. But with the new color scheme, red means that I'm long and then stop in place. Blue means like the blue arrows, right? This might be, or these might be some markets that I might want to buy, okay? And then green means that I've got in, I got my initial profit target out, and I have my stop in place and i want to make that a trailing stop i'm going to adjust it manually now i was working to make sure that i was with the pretty girls to show you and like for instance this ftm was one that was kind of going straight up a couple days ago so i popped in on it so i got in here i took initial profits here okay and then my stop is here and so far so good looks pretty good on that one now let's just start at the top and we'll skip over that one and get back to it okay so here's one i bought earlier today why did you buy it dave because it was going up okay and you can see right here 18.71 percent and we'll get we'll do a sort on these in one second to see what's still hot but so far this is pretty hot i got in here right i'm trying to think the exact time i got in but it was earlier today and some of these were like pretty close to presentation i think that sushi was by the way i don't think i've ever made money in sushi for some strange reason but i'm going to give it another shot now this one's a little bit more like a core methodology type of setup it's probably a bow tie it made a nice thrust from lows you had some landry light little pullback to the 30 ema one of 
my favorite patterns and there's a lot i have a lot of favorite patterns but that's one of them and but i'm going to keep it on a pretty short leash so if i were trading this as a stock my stop might be down here somewhere where the the position is just an utter failure right but with crypto because crypto is hot right now and i'm trading mostly relative strength okay by relative strength i'm just buying the ones that are up look at that 18 percent 20 percent 16 percent i'm buying the ones that are up the most for the most part right but i'm starting to see a few pull back and set up so that's why i got long this one stop right here again on a short leash because if it comes in and stops me out as long as this is plenty green over here and again we'll get to sort them in one second then i want to stay that i'm not worried about getting knocked out of one okay and you just have to learn not to get attached and you have to be detached i guess is another way of saying it and i just said that i never made a diamond sushi <laughs> you know i gotta watch that i don't start putting my emotions onto this chick coin okay just like one of you guys, and, and you know, I, I share your frustration. You talk about MTTR, which is in the portfolio, and how frustrating that stock makes you. And it frustrates me too. But I'm I'm working, and it's a work in progress, believe me, but I'm working to get less frustrated by stocks that aren't doing what I want them to do, right? That stock has no control over my emotions. I know. Yeah, right. So here's another one. This one's a little bit more like a core setup, right? Because it pulled back to 30 EMA. It had nice little Landry light, nice, nice, nice thrust higher, and it was beginning to take off. And I thought that would be kind of a cool one. And it's also it was up like 10% when I got in earlier today. And you know, where I'm going, you know, getting back to the window dressing, to the pretty girl kind of thing, is over the last few days, I was thinking that, okay, if a crypto currency is hot. I want to make sure I belong that currency before I come to this webinar tonight. So that was kind of in the back of my head last few days and especially today. So here's Adam. You know what they do? I have no idea. <laughs> so I bought it here. My stop is here. So this so far has been a failure, but I don't care. Okay. If this comes in and stops me out, there's other ones that I want to buy. And believe me, I'm not always this flippant. I would love to be always this flippant. But this RS trading is like this. You just you just got to be willing to get out, get out, get out, and go find something else that is hot. And it's just, it's just it's just a lot of fun to do that. So these are ones that or that I'm looking at, and a lot of in some cases you might say, well, why didn't you go and buy them? It's like, well, because I don't have any room left. You know, I, I've 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 exhausted my equity in the cryptos xlm this looks really good um you know it's like right now if if i weren't doing this webinar and i've been known to do this before i would probably sell this atom right now okay and i would buy this xlm what if i could do that on the fly probably not <laughs> i wish i had help i could do this i could do this so, you know, don't get attached to anything. Be willing to bail out on things if they're not if they're not performing, okay? All right, I'm not going to try it. Maybe after the webinar, we'll see. Link looks okay. You can see it's got a nice Landry light higher. It's pulled back. It looks like it's trying to make a thrust higher. Now, keep in mind what I'm doing here is because the momentum, we're still in a momentum market, I'm being a little lenient as far as maybe getting in a little early on some of these as they're pulling back. I'm not waiting for like a deep, deep pullback. As long as they're moving higher nicely, then I wanna be in them, okay? So let's just keep going through these. Nice Landry light higher, right? Nice little pullback. Now beginning to rally out of the pullback. That's a pretty good looking crypto. EOS, nice accelerated thrust higher. We're not going to sit around and wait for it to come all the way back to the EMA because the market is hot right now. Okay. If we're in stocks, trading stocks, I should say, and we're in this kind of crazy, funky market we're in, we'll take a look at it in one second. 
then maybe we might want to wait for a little bit more perfection. You do have to be careful not to get sloppy just because you're in a momentum market, but you can get lenient, okay? A little more lenient, okay? Nice land your line higher, 30 EMA again. And you could do the same exact thing, by the way, in ACP, which is from stock charts. I just really got into this particular platform, TradingView. And but ACP does the same thing, and but I have a year subscription to this one, so I'll probably stick with this for a while. I also have uh, a link if you're interested in this one and stock charts. Just you can just go to stockcharts.com. Okay, FTM. This one I bought a few days ago. Why did I buy it? Well, I bought it because it was going up. Okay. And you know, for some people, it's hard to buy things that are going straight up. But keep in mind, this is a very inefficient market at this time, and, and it's a big and. It's also a momentum market, and these things are going straight up. And it's a little hard, I know, to buy them going straight up. You just got to be willing to stop yourself out if they don't work out. So you can see it was a little iffy on this one, but luckily it took off nicely. And maybe that's that thrust pause thrust pattern we talked about last week where a market takes off as a, a pause day and then it takes off again. Here's another one. Why did I buy this one? Because it was going up. And at the time it was it was one of the better looking ones. I like that it was coming off the lows. You could see it sort of failed miserably at first, but this isn't too much of a sell off. And I guess at the time, and I don't is it's no way to figure out exactly my thinking. But if I had to guess, I'm thinking that there was nothing else that looked great at that time, and that's why I stuck with that one. And you can see, nice little move higher. Got my stop in here. So we'll see. Ada. And here's the thing. Like I said earlier, once I hit my initial profit target and I'm free rolling, I like to give positions room to breathe. Same exact thing that I do with stocks, okay? But something like the, what was I just thinking about dumping? The Atom, okay? If I could do it on the fly, I'd get rid of Atom and I'd buy whatever the one was in here. I already forgot, XLM, okay? I'd swap those two out. And it's kind of like, I'm not gonna stress over the fact that I just bought this earlier today, so what, okay? It's not performing. You're fired, <laughs> you know? I don't care. But again, Ada doing really, really well. I'll probably tighten the stop a little bit. This is kind of parabolic. I don't want to, I really don't want to let it go all the way back down to here. Okay. So I will bring this up to probably below this little breakout bar here. But this is what happens when you get in a momentum market. Everybody's rushing in at the same time. But you have to also be willing to cash out. Okay. So right here, I bought this one here. And it came right back in. And you could argue, well, we should have sold. Well, yeah, again, but going back to that date, I don't think that everything was super hot. They were just beginning to heat up back then. But I did sell some here, half, okay, just in case. And now I'm trailing a stop higher. So let's say you do buy one of these coins that's at a super low level, like SC, which this thing, I love this stupid coin, shit coin, <laughs> because when it goes, it goes. But you see, I bought it back here and I bought a plethora of it. It was 0.012 cents, right? Now I wasn't Donnie thinking, I was thinking, okay, it was up 20%. And I thought it was worth a shot. And I flipped out half right here. Okay. I didn't bet the form. You know, I bought 20,000. Ooh, big spinner. Maybe 100,000. You know, <laughs> and it is fun. I know to buy a whole bunch, right? But you got to be careful. And, you know, they can spike like this a lot. And that could be kind of frustrating if you miss a spike. But I'm in a position of strength now because if I get stopped out, so what? Okay. I think I skipped over BAT. Now BAT, I took, I got in here, I took partial profits here, and you see it's coming back in. If it stops out, it's gonna be just above where I got in, so I'll make a tiny bit on the trade, but it looks like it's rallying out of this pullback. So, so far so good on that. On that. If I was just seeing that for the first time, I would say, okay, we got Landry Light, we got Persistency, we got a nice little pullback, 
and then now it's trying to rally out of the pullback. So that looks pretty good. TRX, this is the one I this is one I actually love better than the SC. Okay. Tron. Do you know what they do? I, I have no idea. But I got in here. I'm not sure exactly why I got in on that bar. And, and there's so many trades, it's too much to document. And I'm not I'm not documenting enough stuff on all my stock trades. But you know, if you want to learn how to trade, document, document, document. <laughs> And then what was his name? Can't think of the guy's name off the top of my head, but he wrote the book, book Principles. And it started a manual and I, I, I haven't gotten too far with it, but one of the things he talked about was another one of those. So if you find yourself making a mistake over and over again, he called it another one of those, and then you put in a procedure or a policy to deal with that. But I'm not sure exactly why I bought on that day, unless it was taken off. Because I find it kind of odd. I need to find out. I need to go back in and look and see where I bought on this one. It might have been on this day here instead. I don't know. But anyway, I did flip out half there, and my stop is above where I got in. So I'm free rolling on that one. Maybe I was anticipating a little bit. I don't know. This one's kind of choppy, but this bar, this thing looked like it was going to the moon when I got in. Kind of came back in, chopped around a little bit, but it never did come back below the breakout bar, okay? And then it rallied nicely. I took half my profits and then here's your stop right there. And ideally in some of these, I'd love to have my stop down below the 30 EMA and ride them for a long, long time. And if some of them that are taking off correct and don't come down to the EMA and then begin to trend in a more orderly fashion, then maybe I'll be able to get into that long, long term trend following mode and ride them out. Quantum, this one got in on this breakout back here and then immediately it came right back in. And, but it was just a small loss at this point in time and there must have not been anything better. So I stuck with it. Now, some of these, like for instance, this one here, so what if you stop out, then you can say, well, look at this day here. This day was fantastic. You can get in, even if you bought the high of that day, it'd still be a good time to buy. But you see, I was able to flip it out and then now my, stop is way up here. I wish it was always this good. You might not see my fat ass again. <laughs> I'm half kidding. So now here's, this was one that was crazy to buy, okay? But I have to admit, you know, having the educational business allows me to practice what I preach and I want to make a fine example. So last week on the 15th, I think that was the day after the weekend charts. No, that was probably a Saturday. It was 15th Saturday. And by the way, as I said last week, Saturday morning, great time to trade these things. 15th was a Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Okay. So I came in, saw this thing up tremendously. And I'm like, well, Dave, it's been up quite a bit. It's like, well, it's the hottest one. You said we're in a real estate market. You got to buy it. Okay, so my hand was kind of four, so I bought it. But what if it comes back in? Well, so what? You know, this atom, I hope not, but I might flip it out anyway, but this might be a perfect example of buying the high tech, okay? It takes a certain mentality to do this, but once you do it, and once you get the reps in, okay? Like I got this atom, I was like, oh, it's, you know, you're, you're getting ready to kick you out, right? Because I like something else and you haven't stopped out. Now, if you don't like something else, you know, give it the benefit of the doubt. Just see what happens. You get stopped out. So what? I'm not going to lose, what, I'll lose two bucks on this thing. I don't care, right? But if you get into the mode, especially when it's crazy RS, like, oh, I'm going to flip this out. And you're always going to be with the hottest girl or guy, depending on your preference, but always the hottest one or both. Who am I to judge? Then it becomes a game and it's a lot of fun. Now, one thing I would caution you on is like, okay, Dave, why aren't you you in REQ? Well, this thing they just it just started trading at least on Coinbase, and it it's going straight down. Yeah, it's the hottest one. Okay, it's up forty percent, but I just don't like the fact that this thing is going down. This kind of looks like a dead cat bounce. I know forty percent is quite the bounce. I just don't want to buy something that that looks like it could be in a lot of trouble. And you don't know, there's probably a lot of people on the hook on this thing, because this thing's going straight down. Now, FTM, on the other hand, 
which is, uh, look at that, number two in the list, okay, going up, right? And when I bought it here, boy, I bought it nosebleed, immediately regretted it, but then what happened? The next few days, up nicely. OMG, got a stop in this one, just bought this one earlier today, okay? So I do have a stop in place. I don't have it on the screen, probably down here somewhere, or maybe even a little bit less, but here's the deal. If this thing starts coming in and there's some other good looking ones in here, then maybe I might go after that. Now, if I come in and I see them tailed off a little bit like this, okay, EWT, I'm not gonna rush in and buy it, but if I see it kind of like at the top of the candle, oh my God, I just said the word candle. <laughs> Then I'm gonna get in. Now this is one, I tried to buy it and it wouldn't let me in and I couldn't figure out why. The only thing I could figure out is on cracking I've been having trouble buying sometimes and unless I had a lot of orders in place, stop entry orders, they do take away your margin. In fact, I think a swim does that too. Like if you put in, you know, you wanna buy 10, let's say a thousand shares of $10, $10 stock, well, They'll dink you for ten thousand dollars. There's been days where I'll put in a half a dozen orders, knowing that I have plenty of money, and all of a sudden I'll make that 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 one order I want to do at the market that I'm pretty excited about, and I don't want to put in a stop entry, just one in. It won't let me take it, and then it's like, oh, well, that says I'm out of money. Well, you got to go in and get rid of some orders. So that's one problem I've been having. Uh, Y'all, let me know, and if you're watching this on YouTube, let me know down below. If you're having any issues with cracking buying certain cryptos, and I tried to get in as perp, could not do it. By the way, one thing I haven't been paying a lot of attention to is volume, and maybe that's maybe I need to because I see down here volume is pretty low on this thing, so I'll probably need to start paying more attention to that. As size gets bigger, it's going to be harder and harder. Let's take 50 minute chart. Yeah, you can look at a 50 minute chart, so it's not a tremendous amount of volume in this one. So maybe I was lucky that I didn't get it, you know, in this particular case, but that's something that I need to be a lot more cognizant of. So far, I haven't ran into any trouble, but a lot of these things have a lot of volumes or enough volume to make uh, trading them worthwhile. But anyway, so you can see top of the list, I am long, and ideally you wanna be as long, as many as possible, but you can see I've got quite a few, okay? And, and quite a few have already made money on, and so this KS, this, uh, what is this, ADA? Or, yeah, it's ADA, okay. So ADA was the hot stock back here. It was a hot, was hot, um, you know, you want a window dress and be in this thing to look good, right? And then, lo and behold, so far, knock on wood, it's still the hottest one, okay? ICP, you can see, still pretty, it's, uh, it's becoming pretty hot. It's towards the top of the list, top 10, right? It's also it's also coming out of a setup. So that if you're having a hard time with RS, look for setups first, like a pullback, and then look for the RS. All right, any questions at all that? But as you can see, it's it's fun, okay. And if you if you think they're crap and they are, they're shit coins, right? That's why I'm not I'm, I refuse to call them anything else unless I have to keep it PG13 or PG because. When I get in these things, I am just getting in them to make money, okay? And that's what I want to do. And that's, and by the way, that's the whole reason we're trading. One of you guys was talking about one of your friends that that's he's only trading, what was it, gold stocks and pot stocks, and he's trying to buy the high. He's trying to he's trying to buy the low of the day, and he's trying to sell the high of the day, and that's just a horrible thing to do. Instead of doing that, he should try to make money. And that's the only thing he should focus on doing. All right, let me get my screen shared. If you guys want to start talking about individual stocks, do so now. Let me see if I can get rid of some stuff here. Uh, you're fired. You're fired. And you, all right. So let's take a look at the P's first. And let's make this a little bit bigger. All right, that's a P500. You can see I drew a little line in there earlier tonight for the service. But you can go back a ways. We can go all the way back to the 23rd, okay? So almost one month of trading, and we haven't made any forward progress. 
on a net net basis. And I'm always I'm always preaching net 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 net. If you didn't know anything about the markets, where's the market today? Where was it last week? Where was it yesterday? Where was it two weeks ago? Where was it two days ago? Where was it two months ago? Where was it a year ago? Okay. Net net, very important concept. But you could see P sold off, they gap down, this looks ugly. Oh, they gap down, it's off to the races. Chop, 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 slowly grinding high, finally accelerated upside. No, nope. come back in. And you know, on an intraday basis, like let's take a look at like even like a 15 minute bar, probably smooth it out a little bit. But let's take a look at what it did today. It sold off, it rallied, it sold off, it rallied. You know, it's a Jackie Mason kind of market. And that's a tough market to trade. Unless, of course, you're some sort of reversion to the mean player. Then you had a field day today, right? <laughs> NASDAQ Composite, it's below all three moving averages. What happens, as I learned from Greg Morris, as soon as the same exact day, it's mathematics, the same day price closes below an exponential moving average, what does it do? Anyone? Anyone? It turns down, okay? What if it's a 200-day exponential moving average? It'll turn down. It's mathematics. So if you really squint your eyes, you could see that on this day here, this moving average actually turned down. A little bit more obvious in the 20 day. Now, what happens with a simple moving average? Okay. Well, you can see on this day here, it closed below it, but it, it the moving average actually climbed higher. Okay. So there is a little bit more lag in that 10 day simple, but I do like a simple moving average for the shorter time periods, like the IPO pattern, the little breakout pattern we talked about last week in the Facebook group five-day simple moving average. The Facebook group is Dave Landry's Trend Traders. We've got a great group there. You do have to, it's free, but you have to qualify by being a, at least a gold member of DaveLandry.com. That's so we know you're up to speed. We know you're a trend trader. And, you know, quite frankly, it keeps a riffraff out. <laughs> Half kidding. Russell 2000, there's the poster child for why trading has been difficult lately, okay? This is really a Jackie Mason market. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. Look at the moving averages, all turned down in here. We had the bow tie down back here, close enough to all-time highs for all intents and purposes. Sloppy, okay, in the action, but now rolling back down. So this market could be a lot of trouble. What concerns me is, when you see a market kind of toppy like this and you break below the base, anybody who, anybody who bought in this whole consolidation, thinking it was gonna go higher, is a hurt and pop as this market drops further and further. And as a general statement, not traders, but people, people don't sell stocks when they're on the way down, they sell them when they're on the way up, okay? It's just human nature. And a lot of people will be looking to get out of the break even, so it's called overhead supply. And it's hard for a market to get past that. Take a look at the energies, down 2.5% today, plus. Gap down, all three moving averages turned down in here. So that's not looking so hot. In downtrend proper order. 10 is less, 10 simples less than 20 exponential, 20 exponential is less than 30 exponential. That's not looking so hot. Now, the metals and mining were kind of getting their act together not too long ago, but now they roll back over in here. Not looking too good, multi-month lows. You know, check back often because a few days ago or maybe a week ago, sure seemed like I was getting a little more bullish, right? But now I'm Pulling those horns in once again. Gold and silver, as you can see, banging out new lows with a little bit of vigor. And that's helping to drag the metals down. Banks were trying to get their act together, but nope, rolled right back over. It looked like they were rolling over a while back. They had this bow tie, as you can see, kind of a rollover. And this downtrend from this bow tie sort of remains in, in effect until it until it makes new highs in the market or this top i should say 
not that you want to hang on. Let's say you were shorting, you you want to stop out, obviously. But you don't want to get too bullish just yet. You want to make sure it gets back to this back past this prior peak before getting too excited. But as you can see, it stalled chart and now it's selling off. Biotechnology beginning to break down on this little consolidation. Try to get it together right here. Chop, 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 chop. Now break it down again. A little concerning. Drugs just recently broke out. Coming back in. So far, so good. They're looking pretty good. Uptrend proper order. A little bit of Landry light, especially in the 30 EMA, so that's okay. But we got to take things on a day by day basis. Retail kind of flatsville, but look what happened here. We got a gap down and now it's chop. Okay, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. Longer term still looks pretty damn good. Okay, short term, intermediate term kind of chopping all over the place. You don't know anything about markets. Where is it at? Eh, 49.50 round numbers. Where was it a month and a half ago? 49.50. Okay. A little bit of concern there. Transports. I don't know anything about markets. Where were they earlier this year? They were up about 1900. Where are they now? They are at 1700. That looks like a downtrend. Okay. Now it's a choppy one, but it's a downtrend nonetheless. And notice that notice that your moving averages stayed in downtrend proper order so far for that entire downtrend. So check back often. Right now, markets are looking a little iffy. I was kind of bullish on the semis, but they pulled all the way back to where they were breaking out from. So that's a little bit of concern. I wouldn't count them down and out just yet. I wouldn't rush out and short them is what I'm trying to say. But, you know, yeah, pull your, pull your horns in a little bit as far as getting excited about them until and unless they start getting back above this little consolidation here, ideally, and ideally go to brand new highs, okay? So that's the market. Mix, 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 mix is what I'm saying. Somebody said UUP is up. We'll take a look at that. That's going to be the dollar. Before we do that, bonds. Okay. If you'd have told me earlier that uh, this year that bonds would be headed up, being that interest rates would be headed down. I would think, uh, what's the guy's name? You crazy. Uh, that's crazy. Who's the guy? Um, Brian Fellow. <laughs> but you know, I believe in what you see and not what you believe. They're all, they're chopping all over the place. You don't want to be long them. Although I think some of you are with some position trades. But in general, they're working their way higher, which hopefully is not a harbinger, if that's the right word of things to come, right? Why would rates be going down right now? Is it signaling, signaling a bad economy or something? Who knows? I don't know. I'm not gonna get too excited. Dollar up, yeah. Craig says dollars up, up is up, up is up. Look at that. So if you told me the dollar's up with uh, everything going on in the world with us, <laughs> I wouldn't have believed it. But hey, believe in what you see and not in what you believe. Now, keep in mind that this is probably to put some pressure or helping to put pressure on commodities because commodities are dollar denominated. If they ever change that, well, let's not sit around and think about hypotheticals, but if they ever change that, <laughs> it could get ugly, you know, especially if um, that currency becomes incredibly strong or incredibly weak, whatever the case may be, I guess incredibly strong. But commodities are dollar denominated. So as the dollar goes higher, and sometimes I forget to look at this, right? But as the dollar goes higher, you could buy more commodities. So commodity prices will go lower, okay? It's not always a one-to-one -one, and you gotta be careful with intermarket, intermarket technical analysis and do read Murphy's book on that if you get a chance. But just remember, and even Murphy says this, that they can be long lead and lag cycles. This makes, makes it hard to time off of it. And the one little tidbit I could give you when it comes to intermarket technical analysis is when they're, when they're positively correlated or negative, co negatively correlated, depending on the normal relationship of the market. So commodities in the, in the dollar would be a negative correlation. Dollar goes up, commodities go down. But those correlations only matter when they matter, okay? 
years ago, you used to be able to trade bonds off the futures, uh, S&P futures and S&P futures off the bonds, however you want to look at it. Now it's a little bit more complicated world, and there's, there's again, long lead and lag cycles. But do brush up on your intermarket technical analysis. And Craig, thank you for bringing the dollar up. All right, any individual stocks you guys want to talk about? I know we talk about them all day on Facebook, so most everybody here I think is in the group. I'll give you a second, going once, going twice. No stocks, I got quite a bunch tonight. Well, there's not a whole lot to talk about. There's not a whole, I mean, my landry list is really small and I do have two setups going in tomorrow, but one of them will probably come off of the next couple of days and, and it's possible that neither one's going to trigger and we'll go back to sitting on our hands. We might go, this might be a record. We might go six weeks, eight weeks or more without um, stocks. Low price, but yeah, that's an IPO. Yeah, I was looking at that one and I couldn't wrap my head around it. And and here's here's the problem. I agree with you, Dave. I like the wide range bar today. It's got plenty of volume. I almost bought it, but the reason I didn't buy it is, and I don't have a five dollar rule, but it seems like I fail miserably whenever I buy an IPO that's less than five dollars a share. But yeah, absolutely. You know, coming into today. I would say, well, it doesn't seem like it has enough range, but with today's bar, yeah, it would have been a buy on today's close. I almost bought five, almost bought five thousand, almost bought a thousand. I mean, you could buy five thousand, you know. Um, but yeah, I almost bought a thousand just for shits and giggles, and then I was like, eh, you know, you're kind of messing around. But yeah, let's let's watch it tomorrow and see what happens. And as I said before, sometimes with the buy at B, and I talked about this in the IPO course. And I probably need to dust that off and 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 um, not 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 necessarily freshen it up because it's the same patterns, but I probably need to do a new one at some point in time. So we get a lot of new examples in here and some of the new things we've been talking about, kind of adding to the course over the years, such as the SPOCs in the last year or two, uh, not as much lately, but in general, and some of the things like uh, buy at B plus one, where okay, we got to buy a B signal here. Let's just see how it acts tomorrow, and then we make a go no go decision. But yeah, ideally, you want to be buying on that day five, which would have been today. And yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, thanks for bringing that one up. But yeah, I have I just had a hard time because it's less than five dollars a share for an IPO. Okay, Dave, what do you think of the former COVID traders? I'm not sure exactly. What you're saying? Are you talking about the people who got sued for 137 million dollars? <laughs> I would never, I would never be shodden Friday, but they were fleecing people and they deserved it. Um, former COVID trades. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Well, it depends. Like, which one are you talking about? Because, like, right now, um, I saw something. Vaccine. I'm long VACC. I'm embarrassed to pull it up because it's not working yet. Ooh, should have stopped out of that one. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, that one's not working. So I need to, you know, shame. And you know, this thing, this thing became a hotel in California. It's probably why I hadn't gotten out. I was trying to get some liquidity to get out. But yeah, it doesn't. So that one doesn't look good. Uh, mRNA. Um, Looks like it's kind of done. I mean, yeah, it's pulled back. You know, maybe you could you could play it above this pivot peak here. Um, oh, Chewy. Okay. Well, ASO is one that we're still in, as you know. You're you're in it. I'm I'm guessing. And I think I'll stop us down here somewhere, probably just below this low. I think it came really close. So we might be stopping out of that one. But you could argue after the fact, right, that that was a COVID play, like Chewy, C H W Y. Um. Well, you know me, I like stocks. We were in this one for a long, long time. Go back and look at the archives and I'll put a link in post. But I don't like them when they're coming like at mid levels, beginning to rally. Like I wouldn't play a pullback here, okay? I'd like to see brand new highs or at the other end of the extreme, have it go down and bottom out, make all time lows and then begin to take off again. That would really get me excited. But I don't like them mid level like this. But yeah, you can argue that. I mean, COVID's coming back. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, it, it's sad if you think about all the people you know that, that, I mean, we all know someone or know someone who knows someone who's 
two has been you know going away and and i thought i was going to go away for a little while there um and it seems like it's back with a vengeance and um it's my understanding that if a virus, what do you call it, a vaccine, if a vaccine doesn't kill the virus, it just kind of pisses it off, okay? And I don't want to get into any controversy on that, but I think that's, I think they're, I think after all is said and done, they're going to say that the Delta variant was a creation of the vaccine, which is a bit ironic, but I'm not a scientist and I follow the science, but the science changes, as you know. So who knows? All right, any more? But yeah, I don't. I wouldn't rush out and and try to play COVID themes, okay? But I would rather. But rather, I would say, okay, this stock's doing well. Um, I've got to be out of that. I hope I'm out of that BACC. If not, I'm gonna have to ring the shame bell. <laughs> Coin. Okay, we'll take a look at that one. Uh, but you know, if something comes up that's set up and you like, then by all means take it. I love coin, okay. And here's a case IPO, as I often say, sometimes they price too high and they die, and that's exactly what it did. The only thing that's that I'm having a hard time with, and I have done a couple of intraday trades on this, the only thing that's bothering me on coin, and maybe I'm being too much of a of a perfectionist, but I don't like this gap right here, and that's got me a little frustrated. Um you know, maybe you need to go in and look at, at what crypto did on that day. And if crypto really tanked, then I can make an argument that it's a commodity related stock, sort of. But in general, I like it. It's a nice, nice, I guess you'd call it a saucer and a handle type of pattern. Uh, it's also a bow tie. Look at that. Okay. I'm just kind of seeing that here. I know I saw it a few days back. This would have been the bow tie set up on this day, entry above the high. Now you would enter, enter a little lower. I like it, but I keep getting hung up on this gap. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a, a high five on that one for for bringing it up because I, I I like it. It's like I just I'm just getting caught up in this gap right here. I don't like to take a stock that has a gap against the trend within the setup. I just feel like it it puts like a Oh, I don't know. Cast the pall upon the stock or something. Maybe whoever whoever bought it up in here and then got gapped down on is looking to get out on that gap because the gap can be resistance. But yeah, I, it, it's interesting. It, it's interesting. I do like it, Sam. So high five. I'll give you a high five ex except for the gap. That's the only caveat there. All right. Day after earnings gap down. Yeah, yeah. It was a little over, a little maybe overreaction on that. So I do seem to remember earnings. That's right. You're correct. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. I appreciate so much you guys being here tonight and girls. Thank you so much. Sorry I make it so hard to find the show. But you can always go to DaveLander.com slash webinar, and you can get in there. E register even if even the link is, is uh, the show is old, and you'll get access to all the upcoming shows. All right, everybody have a great night. We don't talk between now and then. Have a great weekend. And then I think most of you guys and girls, I'll see you tomorrow and Facebook. Thank you so much.